Hello and welcome to part two of creating your own Charlie the Chick. In this video we're going to be learning how to create the wings, the nose, and the feet and sewing them on. So let's get into it. So now that we're done um, with the head and the body and face uh, shaping the face, we're going to work on the beak. So I'm going to take my orange yarn and again you can use whichever yarn you prefer to use um, it doesn't have to be these colors this is just what I've chosen okay so to begin row one of the beak we are going to make a magic ring with our color B yarn whatever that is that you chose so we're going to create our magic ring and inside the magic ring we're going to make four single crochets so one, two, three, four. Now we're going to close our magic ring and I'm going to place my stitch marker. Now for row two, we're just going to place one single crochet in each stitch. So for a total of four. So one, two, three, four. And that is our beak. So we're just going to make a slip stitch to the first stitch that we made. We're going to cut our yarn. Now this is the yarn tail from the magic ring. I'm going to cut that as well just because it's a little bit long um, and whatever's left I'll just stuff right into the beak to give it that little bit of stuffing but it's so small it doesn't really need much. Like that. So we're going to attach the beak to rows 8 to 10 of the face and we're going to try and center it directly between the eyes. So to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the top of where our beak is going to land and it's going to be sewn on to rows nine and to rows ten. Now to secure this where we want it to be, I'm going to just take a couple fabric pins and I'm just going to pin it just so I make sure that I have the right placement before I sew it on. You want it centered right between the eyes. like that and so that's pretty good placement I'm happy with that so I'm going to take the yarn end and I'm going to put it on my darning needle and I'm going to sew the nose onto the face so I'm just going to insert my hook right here I'm going to remove that try and get underneath those stitches there And then we're going to push it up to row eight so that we make sure that we have everything attached correctly. All right, so over there, we're just going to take that needle out. And then and 
and there's our beak attached. So I like to make a little knot. Like that. And then I'll just push my yarn back to the back of the head. And I will just cut my yarn, weave in my end. This yarn is very fluffy and it definitely breaks apart a lot. And there's our beak. So my beak was a little bit smaller, it looks like, so I only attached it to row eight and nine. But if your beak's a little bit bigger, you can attach it lower. I just decided kind of in the moment here that um, it wasn't it wasn't gonna look as good if it was lower. So that's kind of things that you can adjust and change as you go. So there's the beak complete. For the next step, we're gonna make the wings. So we're going to make a magic ring for row one. And within that magic ring, we are going to make eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna pull our magic ring closed. And I'm going to place my stitch marker. Now for row two, we're going to place an increased stitch in each stitch that we just made. So two single crochets in each stitch. So for a total at the end of this row of 16 stitches. So increase, 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 all the way along for a total of 16. And that is row two complete of the fin. Now for row three, we're gonna do a single crochet and an increase. So one single crochet and an increase. We're gonna do that eight times around. Our final stitch count at the end of this row should be 24. Single crochet increase and I'll meet you at the other side okay and that is the end of row three now for row four we're going to place two single crochets and an increased stitch one two and an increase Two stitches in one. One, two, and an increase. And we're going to do that all the way around to the other side and our final stitch count for row four will be 32. So I'll see you at the other side. Okay, so this is the completion of row four. Now, um, we are done crocheting the rows for the wing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a slip stitch into this next stitch to close it off. And we're gonna cut a decent sized um, strand of yarn because we have now sew the wing um, to look like a wing. And then we also need to sew it onto the body. 
Now I'm going to just remove my stitch marker. Pull my yarn tail out. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to pinch the wing in half so that this is on the corner. Just like so. You can cut your yarn ends so that they're not as long. I had to change yarn in the middle, so that's why I have so many. So we're gonna fold our work in half like this so you're looking like a little taco. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our darning needle and we're gonna sew this wing together in half. So you're gonna take your hook or your needle and you're gonna push it through both sides. And you're just gonna keep going back and forth all the way along until it's sewn up and you wanna make sure that you're doing all the stitches that match perfectly in the middle. So there should be no spacing if you if you make sure that you catch all the right stitches. Now you're obviously going to make two wings in the exact same way. So once we're done with this wing, we'll make another one the same way. And then we will come back and we will sew them on. So just complete sewing this together and make a second wing and then we will meet back here to sew them on. Okay, so once we have two of the wings made, what we wanna do next before we attach it is we wanna create this little curve in the wing here. And that's just gonna kind of, you know, it's gonna make the wing flare out when it's on the chick. So to do that, we're going to take that same yarn end and a darning needle. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically weave our needle through the wing through as many stitches as we can because the more stitches you put it through, the, the harder it will be to, for people to see, basically. But you wanna make sure that it comes out at the tip of the other side of the wing. It's gonna pull that through. And then you wanna just basically pull it until you get your desired bend in your wing. You could like pull it really hard and it will bend more but you don't want it to be too bent, just like a little, little bit out. Once you're at your desired bend in your wing, uh, I'd like to just put a knot here, just to secure that where we put it, like so. And now they both have little bends to them. Now that our wings are complete, we are going to attach them to our body. So we want to attach the wings to rows 14 and 15 on the side. So we'll count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you want to attach them just right here. So what we want is we want the flat part of the wing, like it's it's like a taco, so you want this flat edge to be facing forward. And we want the bend that we made to be facing upwards like this. So this is what it will look like when it's sewn on. Now once you kind of have an idea of what where you want it placed on the side of your body, you just want to secure that with fiber pins. just so you know exactly where you're gonna sew it on. Just like that. It just will help make sure it stays in place while you're sewing so that you don't, it doesn't move. Now once it's in the place that you want, we're just gonna sew it on. All right, so I'm just gonna sew this on. I'm going to take my pins out as I'm going. I'm 
you just want to make sure it's secured so however many times you want to sew it just to make sure is totally fine like that now before we tie off sometimes I like to just sew down the little top piece of our wing just to keep it in place this is definitely a step you can skip if you like when the wings kind of are like they can flop all over I personally don't really like that so I just basically will stick my needle down two rows from where I attached the wing and then I basically will just insert the hook where it meets up with the yarn on the wing and then I will push it back in right beside but not into the same one and then I just push it to the back and it just keeps the wing down so you can't, it doesn't like flop around as much so that's definitely a personal preference step it's not a necessity step that you have to make so there is one wing attached so let's attach the other wing and I'll meet you back here when that's all done. All right, and then once we're happy with our placement of our wings, we can just tie the yarn in the back together to secure them. Cut our ends. And weave in, them in. And there is our chick with his little wings on. Okay, the next step is making the feet. So we're gonna make two of these and we're gonna be using our color B yarn. So to start, we're gonna create a magic ring. And for row one, we're gonna make four single crochets within the magic ring. Two, three, four. We close our ring. And I'm gonna just place my stitch marker. Now for row two, we're gonna do a single crochet and an increase. So single crochet. increase single crochet and an increase and at the end of this row we should have six stitches like that. Now for row three through five, so three, four, and five, we're going to do a single crochet in each stitch, so six stitches for the three rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's row three. So we're gonna complete that for row four and five. And we're gonna complete a second foot. And once we're completed that, we will meet back here. Okay, now that we have both feet made, we're gonna attach them to the body. Now the feet are going to go on the underside of the body, like so, and we're going to attach them to rows 27 and 28 of the body. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. And we're also going to attach them on a slight angles outwards, like so. Now, once you're happy with the placement of the feet, you're just going to attach them with fabric pins before we sew on. Just so we can get a good look at it. Make sure that they're in the right place. Like that. Now we're going to take our darning needle and we're going to sew on the feet. Just the same as you've sewn on everything else. Just take one of these off. Do one at a time, might be easier. We're gonna sew this on. Now we're gonna do again what we did for the wing, if you like, so that the feet don't flop around like this. We're just going to insert our hook up two rows. Sorry, we're gonna insert our hook up one row, like so. One row. And we're just going to put our hook through the foot and then back into that same row and then just bring your hook out the bottom and that's just going to keep your foot up now we'll place the second foot So we want it around there, so I will just pin that. Attach my needle. And I'm just going to sew that on. And I'll meet you back here when it's sewn on. Now once both feet are attached, we're just going to tie a knot in the yarn ends here just to secure them where they are. We're going to cut our ends. And weave in the ends. And there we have our feet attached. Now we're going to complete the hair tuft for his little head. So we're gonna take our size four yarn and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wrap it around our fingers like this until probably like five or six or seven times. However many um, hairs you want, basically. I always like to just have a little bit of extra, so, and then we're, we're gonna just cut the yarn like this and we're gonna have strands of yarn just like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our strand of yarn here, like so, and in the top of the head we're going to make a little hair tuft here. So we're going to just insert our hook underneath the first stitch like that. We're going to grab the yarn and pull it through a loop like that. Then we're going to stick our fingers through that loop and grab those ends and pull through like that and that's one now how many you add is really a personal preference um, you could just have one if you wanted or you can have seven just depends on how much of a hair tuft you want him to have 
I'll probably just add a few because I think it's cute just having a few. All right, now when you have the amount that you want, what we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the yarn fibers. Now you can do this many different ways. I just like to stick a darning needle, honestly, into it and just spread apart the fibers so that they kind of look more like hair. And it's, it's really easy. I know some people use an actual brush um, some people use the dog brush, just depends on what you have on hand. So this is what I have on hand, so this is what I'm using. And we're just basically combing out the hair to make it look more like a strand of hair. Now before I finish here, I'm just gonna cut my hair to length. Now. Again, this is going to be personal preference. I kind of like a little small tuft of hair, so I'm just going to cut my guy's hair right there. And then I can continue separating the fibers, whatever is left, until I'm happy with it. Just like that. I may even cut off a little bit more length. It's just kind of a personal preference on how you want it to look. There. And there's our little hair tuft. And there is our tick all complete. We, I really hope you loved this tutorial. I can't wait to see what you guys made. Please let us know in the comments down below if this was helpful for you and if you'd like to see it again. Please hit that subscribe button if this was helpful for you. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!